Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the Bald Explorer, out on another exploration looking at landscape, heritage and nature. And today I am joined by lovely David Chown. Hello, David. Hello again. We've uh, recently made a video where we looked at um, Horsel... Wait a minute. Horsel Common. Horsel. Horsel. Yeah. See, I get confused. I get the name confused with Horstel Keynes, which is in East Sussex. <laughs> Horsel Common is in Woking. That's right. In Surrey. Anyway, we're not there now. Where are we today? We're in Purbright. Purbright. Yeah. P-I-R-B-I. -R. Derives from the old English meaning pear tree. Ah, right. And is there an old pear tree here? Not now. Not now. No. And it's a village? That's right, yes. Now, That's we're right. filming uh, in early December. The sun is quite low. If I come round here and bring the camera around, you'll see how low the sun is. And it, it may well be destroying the shot, so it's going to limit what we can do. But on the green here, there are, well, I don't know if they're Canada geese, but look at them. They're all coming in a little little line from the pond. To see if we can have a, a quick word with one of them. Um, excuse me, can I ask you a little bit about what you're doing here? I'll take that as a no. No comment. No comment. <laughs> so they're always here, you told me. Oh, there's always geese. Yeah, or ducks or something or, here. Yeah, it's interesting that there's a there's a whole range of them. And this is the pond. It's a very nice pond. It is. Yeah, it's always been here as long as I can remember. I don't know how old it is exactly. No it's, fishing permitted. It says no, on the it's, sign it's there. A classic little English village with the green and the pond and the houses all around it which are now are too expensive for most people who live here to afford. Yes, it's one of those villages. So we're quite, we're, we're close to Woking, which is qu close to uh, London, of course. So I guess it's a commuter village yes, for yeah. the, the rich and famous. Well, rich, perhaps. <laughs> and not so famous. famous. So where do, the, where do the, the older locals live? Oh, I, I don't know. They'd be in cheaper housing, yes. sort of along the way somewhere at the back. Yes, shame, a shame. So we're going to take a stroll across the green here, which is uh, quite a large old green, surrounded by a lot of uh, trees. What are these trees growing around the... Um, David, I should say, is a bit of an expert on trees, <laughs> aren't you? Well, it's mainly birch by the looks of it around the pond there. Yeah. And there's a lot of oak around here as well. And we saw some red oaks on the way in, didn't we, as well? We saw the leaves on the ground, didn't yes, we? Yes, yes. And they're the oak leaves that are quite big. They're sort of three times the size. Oh, yes. Yeah, quite big. Much more jagged, too. Yes. They're quite... Uh, and, and they're not native. No, they're North American, I believe. It's very squishy it's on the ground. And much. just suddenly <laughs> my feet are, are all squishing down there I don't know if you can see any of that uh, right we're aiming for the church where is the church straight over that way ahead uh, of us. although it's just after lunchtime the Sun now is very low which gives the appearance that it's almost early evening now it does it's, it's like a it always if the leaves were on the tree you'd think it was nine o'clock in on June or something yeah, like that it's absolutely. very long shadows and just crossing this little road that bisects the green and then uh, we'll head down to the church well here we are suddenly down the lane Go and around the corner and there's Purbright Church there yeah. it is I'll let you do the gate uh, I always use the excuse I'm holding the camera and the microphone which is a true ex true enough excuse it's a weak excuse <laughs> I use it once a week so You've it's alright you've got two feet oh thanks now the first thing we see when you come through here is a, um, a legend's um, gravestone. There's a prominent p stone with a, a prominent person. That's right. Yeah. From history. Who are we looking at? Um, Henry Morton Stanley. Henry Morton Stanley, famed for the man who found Dr. Livingstone. I presume. In Africa, in deepest, darkest yeah. Africa. Let's go and have a. We can't not go and have a look. And. He has the <laughs> single most tallest uh, gravestone here. Uh, here we go, look at that. Henry Morton Stanley, 1841 to 1904 in Africa. And his wife. And uh, it's, uh, yeah, he definitely wanted to be uh, no known, or at least whoever was responsible for it. Yes. 
it's uh, the first thing you see, isn't it? As it you come is, as you corner. come in. It's and I guess like a big standing stone out on the It is, isn't wall. it? It's, it's absolutely massive. Yeah, that's, that is impressive. Yeah. So then we go back to uh, a bit of normality here. We threw some of these. I know people get a bit upset when they say you're walking on people's graves, which personally I think is a load of nonsense because when you go into a church, often it, when you walk up the aisle, you're walking on people's graves. Yeah, and often the graves are on top of other graves. Yes. All the stones have been reused as a flooring and... Yes. And it's, it's not really as if you're being, um, what's the word that they... Disrespectful. D yes, disrespectful. It's not really that you're being that because the fact that we're here filming and looking at these wonderful things is respect in itself. There's quite a big old graveyard with some interesting trees in here. Yeah, we've got some cedars, some Irish yew. An Irish yew? Irish yew, yeah, they're much more upright. It's, uh, in Latin, they would call it fastidiet. You're not being fastidious about that. All the time. All the time. All the time. All the time. It's quite there's, a big there's graveyard, an isn't it? Yew there, and there's an Irish yew there. And you can see oh, right, there. okay, hang on. So the English yew is the one that's now in front of us. And then if I pan round here, this is an Irish yew. Oh, that's quite easy to tell the difference then, because it's, it's a lot more compact and, as you say, upright. Much more upright, whereas the English yew is much open, much more open and raggedy. Yes. It's interesting looking at the church because we have been here before, but we didn't make a video. No, oh, you didn't bring a camera, did you? I didn't bring a camera on that particular occasion. But on this, I've been reading about parish churches and the design of them. And it's actually fascinating to, to look at it now afresh when you've just been reading something. Of course, I'm going to open myself up to complete abuse here <laughs> because I'll get it all wrong. But it's a very attractive church, isn't it? Oh, it is nice. I'm, I think it was built on this side of a much older church. Yes. But uh, I say recently, but a few hundred years ago, even then, it's. The first thing I notice is the uh, the heating's on. Yeah, that's nice, isn't it? It's actually Ooh, it's as cold as anything this time of year when you come in. It, yeah. Well, this is um, yeah. So this is. 19th century, I had to think then, 18... 18th. 18th, oh yes, 17... 1785, 18th century. 18th century, yes, that's my brain just really not engaging at the moment. And what we're seeing is, is quite an amazing, an amazing and neat church with what looks like a very brand new organ does, isn't it? Lovely. Up, up, up there, which is at the back. It's interesting that they've got this very wide um, chancel arch. And then coming into the, into the chancel, which is quite dark, the uh, stained glass window above the altar, which is very pretty, very lovely. There's a, is that a griffin or a dragon on one of them? Yeah. And then another wide arch, which takes us into a a smaller chapel area which is the south wing or transept if you like with a door here which I guess is the priest's door but the roof and actually the roof up there is, is very it's very attractively done isn't it it's very beautiful whatever the, the, the original church was 1214 so this would be the second church here oh so yeah this oh, is gosh. 1214 St Michael's and all the agent angels at Purbright Yes, yeah, so this church, although as you say, is uh, 18th century, there was a great building um, spree around that time as uh, the old churches had sort of fallen into disrepair um, and, and they did start. And then they had this whole new policy of how to build churches, but I wish I could tell you more but I haven't really absorbed <laughs> all of this from the book I it was reading. a few more weeks, maybe. Yes, yeah. that's it, you know, I'm itching, itching to get it out, but I know I'm going to cock it up if I do. And that's the font. Look at the font. It's a, it's a twee thing. That is a bizarre... Could you lift it up? So just have a quick glance on the inside. I'm just going to come over here. There we go. It's more like a sink. Mm. On its very... 
curiously uh, diamond-shaped pillar. A fascinating church, um, and very, you know, it feels very modern, but I wonder how many people come. It looks well maintained, so I imagine it's quite a, quite quite a busy, church, yeah. busy church. Yeah. Well, David, on this video, we've run out of time again. <laughs> it just happens. Soon goes. I know, it? doesn't yeah. it? It does. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, interesting to see Per Bright, but it's a quiet little place now. It is, yeah. Yeah, not much, not much goes on. No, no, the village pubs have all become bars. Oh, that's a shame. And wine bars and got a bit expensive. The last locals pub closed down recently, it's just turning into flats, I think, so uh, it's all, um, if you can afford it, it's nice. Yes, absolutely. Uh, a nice little commuting distance from London or wher wherever you want to go. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, David, for taking me here. It's all right. And uh, thank you for watching. Don't forget to follow, like and subscribe. Become a patron, support what we do. Give me a, a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Bit of a sort of a, a weird walking one, but hope you've enjoyed a little insight into this remarkable church. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on another one. Thanks again, David. Bye. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.